Okay, good morning everybody. I apologize in advance for my poor English. And it's also very difficult for me to start this presentation after a speech from a Nobel Prize and, and also uh, obviously an opening speech from the founder and from uh, the terrific speech from BCG. So I cannot run this uh, session on my own for two reasons. First of all, this is the outcome of a collective effort. So before going ahead, I would like to thank all people and all entities that have been supporting uh, VeChain in developing this white paper. Obviously, BCG team made by many people coming from US and Europe, customers and stakeholders that have, that have been involved in this work, and also the contribution from DMV and from the entire VeChain team. Not only the people that are working on sustainability, obviously, but the entire VeChain team. So, since this is a, is a collective effort, uh, and the collective effort concept is very important for the success of the white paper. Let me uh, call on stage another person that has been also uh, a friendly contributor like me to the, to the realization of this white paper. He's also a friend and he's also a member of the steering committee. So let's give a warm welcome to Luca Crisciotti. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Okay, so we are running this together, so for sure we will make a mess. So I, I, we apologize in advance, so let's so start. We have prepared for like half an hour. I'm pretty sure that we are screwed up, I mean, all the way, but anyway. Okay, <laughs> so we go, we go. First mistake, very good. Okay. Okay, we have a problem because the remote control is going ahead. I'm trying to go back. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's uh, just introduce the topic for, for this session. So first thing is about uh, sharing with you the aspiration journey. We have a new aspiration, but the aspiration itself has been exposed to a journey since 2017. So we will talk about uh, that. We will also try to define the challenge of sustainability. What, what is the challenge for VeChain? in relation to sustainability. We will discuss and share how we change technology and we chain uh, organization could contribute to sort out the complex challenge that sustainability is um, defining. We will go into Web3 and uh, try to share how we believe Web3 could help solving sustainability challenge. We will discuss about uh, how and why VeChain could be considered probably the best layer one platform for sustainability. And then we are going to share a high level roadmap um, at the end of this uh, session. So if there is a, a common pattern across VeChain journey is the fact that since day one, so since 2016, uh, VeChain has been aiming to utilize technology to solve real-world challenges. Therefore, it is quite natural that the real-world challenges are changing and are based, basically defined in relation to uh, the uh, current situation. So, in 2017 in particular, when the ICO was launched and VeChain Foundation was established, the main goal was to set up a technology infrastructure, at the time a superior technology infrastructure, bearing in mind also those kind of needs that were placed by communities, users, and enterprises. And the main focus was about understanding and communicate the value of blockchain technology in itself. Two years later, in connection with the white paper 2.0 release, the focus was more on making sure that this technology, which is for sure a transformative technology, was also getting uh, adoption, and adoption both from users, individual users, and enterprise. And at the time, the focus was to promote uh, user adoption through enterprise adoption. And the technology development itself was 
uh, also aiming to create this kind of connubium. Uh, now, uh, the quantum leap in uh, V-chain aspiration journey is to focus all developments, all conceptual and technology developments, to a very specific uh, problem, which is the sustainability challenge. And in this perspective, I have to say that uh, the contribution of each individual is fundamental. Uh, it's not only about enterprise, it's also about individual. And in particular, it's very important to connect all individual efforts towards a common goal and a common mission, which is part of the sustainability challenge. So this is basically this multiply individual impact to unleash our collective potential for sustainability is the new aspiration for VeChain, which will drive the development of VeChain from now on. So Renato has mentioned sustainability, and uh, uh, th there's of course a question linked to this. How may we define our current challenge? Um, before to answer to this question, I think that it's extremely important to have a common definition of sustainability. I'm pretty sure that if I would ask to each of you what, what means sustainability for you, I would get very different answers. So that's why BCG came in the, uh, let's say, when, when, when they wrote the, the, the white paper, with uh, this definition of sustainability, uh, which has been published by the uh, Sustainability Accounting uh, 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 sustainability accounting standard boards and is made by five different elements. There are of course other definitions of sustainability but this is the one that you will find reading the uh, white paper. I've mentioned five elements. Uh, we are talking about the environment, social and labor conditions and then business model innovation and then leadership and governance. Now all of these elements then uh, bring uh, some additional topics and those topics are evolving uh, over the time. Uh, of course, environment is the topic of the moment, is the topic uh, that everyone is mentioning when we talk about sustainability, and in particular, greenhouse gas emission uh, or energy management. But there are, within environment, for example, other topics that will become probably even more important in the next future. I'm mentioning, for example, water scarcity uh, or uh, biodiversity. Uh, it's also important to keep in mind that sustainability, again, is not only environment, but is a combination of these five elements. That's extremely important. This is something, again, that you will find reading the white paper. Uh, and there are extremely important topics, such as human rights, uh, but also uh, selling practices, customer welfare, privacy, uh, customer privacy and, and data integrity, for example, supply chain management, as well as uh, employee engagement or uh, uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, so we need to keep in mind that sustainability has really a, a broader uh, sense and that that's, that's very, very important. Now, how can we change, given, let's say, this definition, can contribute to the complex challenge of sustainability? This is also very uh, interesting, and uh, uh, this is the result of, um, let's say, a quite deep analysis that uh, BCG was doing, analyzing uh, for all the topics that I've just mentioned uh, in connection with 24 industry sectors. And we can look at this uh, materiality map from two different dimensions. The vertical one, so we can look at uh, how important are those topics uh, industry by industry. Um, and of course, there are, let's say, some, some differences. Heavy industries or energy company, oil and gas companies have as a priority, for example, uh, greenhouse gas. Uh, other companies have supply chain management as a priority or business resilience, especially after the pandemic. But there's instead another way to look at the materiality map, and it's the horizontal dimension. Because if you look at, at the map, you see that there's a lot of commonalities among all uh, the industry sectors in terms of priorities. So um, this is basically uh, brought us to, to look at things in a completely different perspective. Um, there's also to keep in mind that those companies belonging to those industry sectors uh, belongs to uh, supply chains. And 
uh, that there's companies that are using same supply chain for producing uh, different products. So there's a lot of things that they have in common. Um, one of the things also, one of the words that you will see used many times in the white paper is about collaboration. We do believe that if you want to achieve, if you want to tackle some of the sustainability challenge, what one individual, what, what company is doing is not so powerful uh, compared to instead having a community doing things or having a much more active role than what it is today. And let me give you uh, one example about that. Uh, we have taken uh, the production of a bag as an example, it's a very simple one. And you see here that uh, there's a number of actors that are going to contribute or they're sharing the goal to minimize the environmental impact, for example, of this process. And we can start from the farm and the farm can contribute, for example, looking at the um, biodiversity, uh, this power company providing, of course, uh, the energy needed to uh, manufacture the goods that can use renewable energy, the manufacturers that can, of course, use efficient processes, a logistic company that can use the greenest possible form of transportation. Uh, there's, of course, the brands and retailers that have, can pay attention to, for example, ordering goods in order to avoid excess of production. In this picture, then, there are also other two uh, actors that are extremely important or are becoming more important than the past. I'm talking about consumer and institutions. And why they have a different role compared to the past? Because today, as a consumer, if you would like to contribute to minimize uh, environmental impact, you can do it in a different way. You play a different role compared to being passive as it was in the past. What does it mean to play an active role? For example, as a consumer, you can extend the life cycle of a product. You can resell this product to another consumer, or you can dispose it according to some recycle uh, processes. And in this way, of course, there's another actor, in this case a municipality, that has a very important role, because the municipality is the one that have to put in place all the processes needed to make this happen, and to, let's say, extract all the materials from, in this case, the bag, and then handling, uh, let's say, these materials uh, back into the, uh, into, into the process. Uh, this is an example of a kind of uh, simple supply chain. But as I said before, supply chain are connected. And then uh, yes. Renato is going to so go through this. One of the big transitions that we will be exposed to is the transition from linear supply chain to circular supply chain. And what does it really mean and why blockchain could play a role in supporting this transition? In linear supply chain, normally, information flow and value flow was, was exchanged between linear and sequential players. So, retailer was selling something to consumer and consumer was paying something to retailer in exchange. What is different in a circular supply chain is that in order to implement this model, you need to establish a number of uh, interconnection and relationship between players that never got in touch before. So it may be that the manufacturer should release an incentive to the consumer, as an example, to get back uh, material. And this requires a completely different logic and technology. And obviously, for those who are familiar with blockchain, they will easily understand that this kind of peer-to-peer -peer information exchange, trusted information exchange and value could be supported by this kind of technology. This is the reason why we believe that blockchain will play a fundamental role and VeChain will play a fundamental role in supporting and enabling this transition. And we do have an example, Luca. Yeah, this is an example comparing a uh, traditional um, uh, ecosystem concept with, uh, with, a, with a new one. So, um, uh, sticking with the example of the bag, if you want to sell uh, or resell as a, as, a, as a owner of the bag, if you want to resell the bag to another uh, consumer, what you do today is to uh, take it advantage of some of the marketplace uh, present in the market. So, you ship your bag to, to a marketplace, the marketplace then is taking the responsibility to authenticate the good, and then once that this is happening, is selling 
uh, this back to, to, to the next uh, consumer. And then there's, of course, the money flowing according to this process. So money are kept, uh, let's say, by the marketplace until the authentication process uh, is finished. And then once uh, they have validated, basically, that the bag is authentic, they are sending uh, the money to, um, to the seller. Now, as you can see here, there's um, uh, duplicating processes, for example, on the logistic and transportation, because the bag is sent twice uh, instead of uh, being, uh, let's say, sent from A to B. You know? So it's sent to the marketplace. And also for what concern, for example, the transparency on the process that the marketplace is, is using to authenticate uh, the bag, well, that's something that, you know, uh, it, it, it's not so known. The other thing is, uh, imagine that, that the, sell, uh, sorry, the buyer would like to sell the bag once again. I mean, you have to repeat the process because this validation process is not attached to that bag. So once that the bag is shipped to the owner, you lose basically, you know, uh, the added value that has been given by the marketplace. Now, um, talking about ecosystem, we have reimagined uh, let's say, uh, the entire process, giving the possibility to every single actor here in the picture to play a much more active role and to contribute with this behavior to lower, for example, environmental impact in this case. So we have imagined, for example, uh, involving uh, the uh, manufacturer to uh, have a chip, a tag uh, in, in, into the bag, and then the bag, uh, since is, uh, let's say, the chip is granting that the bag is authentic, can be shipped, shipped directly from uh, the seller um, to the buyer. The buyer can validate uh, this information simply with a mobile phone, scanning the tag on the product, and then there is a smart contract which is selling immediately once that this operation is done, the money from, uh, let's say, the buyer to the seller. Um, there's, of course, uh, uh, much less uh, environmental uh, footprint here because there's only uh, one shipment instead of two, and also, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the authenticity is following the bag, so you don't lose it as, let's say, in the previous example. And this is, again, a new way of having uh, actors, again, collaborating together uh, to make things simpler and also to have the possibility to contribute with active behavior, in this case, to also lower CO2 emission. Okay, in the white paper, together with BCG, we have been sketching 12 different possible ecosystems. You should look at this ecosystem that you will find in the appendix of the white paper, not at all like off-the-shelf solution. They are concepts. Uh, compare this ecosystem uh, to a concept car, okay? So something that may happen, will happen, but not in the precise and exact form as the concept car is. And among these 12 ecosystems, we have been choosing to focus on three, which we have been exploring more in detail, which are in the core part of the white paper, and that are, uh, have been chosen because they represent challenges that are more urgent. We believe that these three ecosystems represent challenges that are uh, uh, current and urgent challenges. But that's not enough because it's not only about identifying possible ecosystems, it's also keeping in mind that this is not uh, a problem, uh, each ecosystem is sorting out a specific problem, but in a much wider and complex scenario. So, in the white paper, we uh, are introducing a, a, a new concept, which we call biosphere. What is the biosphere? The biosphere is an environment in which each ecosystem is able to operate in a standalone basis, but also in an interconnected way with other ecosystems that are sorting out other challenges. Why we did so? Because, as Luca said at the beginning of this session, supply chain are all interconnected. So one player, one company, could be part of different ecosystem with different role. Even VeChain, which is the layer one player, is the player that will aim to provide the technology infrastructure which is enabling the rise of this biosphere, may, be, uh, may cover other roles within a specific ecosystem, just for, for example, triggering the rise of a new ecosystem. That 
uh, is also one element of the future strategy for, for the chain. And this biosphere will be the connection between the physical world and the digital world, which is opening up uh, to the uh, uh, introduction of the Web3 web com concept. And obviously, the bridge between um, the physical world and the digital world will be given today by devices like IoT. But in the future, we just learned from the fantastic speech of uh, Professor Konstantin Novoselov that the product itself may become IoT of, of, of the product itself. And this is the future. So maybe we need to reflect a bit about the possible evolution of this concept in view of the rise of smart, uh, smart material. But anyway, this concept of the biosphere, in order to be enabled, need three very basic uh, features. First of all, the possibility to count uh, the value or the penalization coming out from externalities. That's important. So we need to be able to quantify, qualify, and monetize, monetize the positive externalities, meaning reduction of CO2, as an example, or debit the negative externalities, increase of CO2. That's fundamental. Second element, trust. Trust is a scarce resource when you are using blockchain in connecting the digital world with the digital world. In the digital world, trust is given, is, is granted by blockchain technology itself. But in the physical world, that's no longer true. And therefore, proof of authenticity is fundamental. And proof of authenticity, it's about of providing transparency in supply chains, providing proof of origin, traceability. All the use cases that have been developed over the past years have been developed having in mind this vision. They are small and bit small pieces of a big picture. Third element, obviously, is about data ownership. I mean, the more you need to gather data from the real world, the more you need to be sure that they represent reality, but the more you get, gather data from the real world, from people, for example, you need to care about privacy, security, giving uh, assurance that only certain data sets are shared, and so on. And that's very, very important for the future. And so, I would like just to uh, uh, add to this. I mean, if you look at uh, those topics, I mean, data ownership, uh, visibility on sustainability of suppliers, I mean, those are all elements that we have mentioned when we define what sustainability is. And that's really the difference compared to many other initiatives that are just mentioning, for example, again, the environment as the main, let's say, goal to be achieved. But it's, it's much, much more. And I think that the value of this work is really, you know, the ability uh, uh, to combine all these elements uh, to support, I mean, what, is, what we said before, sustainability is a combination of uh, a wide range of topics. So, how Web3 and obviously VeChain can help in this challenge? Basically, I mean, the key concept, one key concept uh, that we would like to share with you is that we are going to use blockchain in order to help society to re redefine the concept of value. So far, when you are uh, dealing with a purchase, you are basically recognizing the economic value. And the the carrier of this value is fiat currency, okay? Tomorrow, if you want to promote the possibility for people to choose, as an example, more sustainable product, you need to be able to quantify and qualify other sources of value, not only the economic value, which is coming out from cost of production and expected uh, profit, but you need also to account for how socially and environmentally good performing is the company that has made that product and how this good behavior has been turned into, for example, CO2 saving, which is allocated to each individual product item. You cannot use fiat currency to do that. Also because you need also to find a way to incentivize people. Remember those kind of uh, interaction and value flow across the different player that are part of the circular supply chain. So, 
tokens are the ideal tool for enabling this transfer of value across different players. And you could use token to store different value than the economic value, which are related to the efforts spent by the company and embedded into that product to be uh, more uh, uh, environmentally and socially, as an example, performing. So, we are going to use basically key features of uh, Web3 uh, in order to tackle this challenge. First thing, building a digital trusted environment. I mean, we used to, in the past, we used to think about the concept of digital twin. So, a kind of a virtual uh, copy of a physical product. I believe that digital twins is becoming more and more an obsolete concept. Products are becoming digital. That means that each product is going to have a digital component which is linked to itself. And this digital component will be essential to enable that kind of transfer of value we've been talking uh, so far. Therefore, you need to give to items, people, a digital identity, a unique digital identity, to be able to uh, exchange in a proper and tracked way this for new form of value across different players. And in this perspective, obviously, tokenization will be key, because it will be the new carrier of value that is going to be used between players for many purposes, mostly, but not only, related to externalities. The more common externalities we are dealing with when we talk about ESG or sustainability, it's carbon. But carbon is just one of the possible externalities. Think of water, think of plastic, and many others. And obviously, in this logic, fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, and smart contracts have a purpose, which is the main difference between, I believe, VeChain as a layer one blockchain platform with any other layer one. We think of technology as a way to sort out a specific real-world problem. And we turn and we uh, address the development of technology features according to the chosen real-world problem. So in this uh, perspective, obviously, when you think of a product, you should think of something which is no longer only digital, becomes the, uh, not, not, not only physical, it becomes digital, as its own identity, and the identity gives the possibility to connect to that product all the, so, the forms of value that are related to it, and gives the possibility to share this form of value across participants in the, in, the, in the different ecosystem according to different uh, uh, rules. So, just to, to recap, we are entering in the Web3 era in which users are obviously not only able to access information, create information, and own this information, but they are also able to do this, not only from the, for the information, but also for the value. And they could basically share this form of value true ecosystem, which are basically disintermediated platform. So we should think uh, about the future as a place in which platform, which are character characterized by a single point of failure, a single owner, will become more and more decentralized. And user, individual, even enterprise, will play different role within that kind of ecosystem. So, one important element in this uh, equation is about involving individuals. Why? Because if you think about our traditional supply chain, the end point of any kind of supply chain, at the end of the story, is the individual. The individual owns the product, the physical product. If we want to recover the matter contained in that physical product. You need to give him a reason for doing it, but you need also to reward him. You need to create a set of aligned incentivization mechanisms which are enabling uh, 
the transfer of value from the individual back to all the player belonging to the given ecosystem. Therefore, you need also to motivate this individual and give him some feeling of be a winner. Gamification will play a fundamental role in that. And we believe that this will be a key role really for enabling individuals and for giving communities a reason for being part of a project like VeChain in the future. That is the future in which we are going to enter from now on. And then uh, other really few reflections. We are running out of time, but I think that uh, this is we, important. As planned. As, yes, of <laughs> course. Uh, so the question is, may we become the platform of choice for sustainability? Uh, well, of course, the answer is maybe yes, but there's also a number of things that VeChain has to do uh, on the internal side. So we have been uh, talking quite a lot about uh, how customers can use our infrastructure, blockchain infrastructure, to enable a number of things. But there's also a lot to be done I mean, internally in VeChain. So let me say that um, we started, I would say, years ago, um, um, and, and all the credit to Sun in, in this case, um, uh, using or choosing this technology which is made by 101 nodes uh, that are validating transaction in a very, let's say, quick way and using also very low energy. I would say that this is still one uh, very key differentiator factors compared to many other blockchain technologies. It's also very scalable, uh, scalable and uh, of course uh, pay a lot of attention to data integrity as well. Uh, so those are, let's say, key functionalities of, of, of the blockchain. There's another element which is key. We have been talking about involving individuals, but not indiv all individuals today are familiar with cryptocurrencies and wallets. Uh, but the fee delegation technology is allowing, even if who do not own directly a cryptocurrency, to be part of, of those projects, to be part of this uh, environment or ecosystem. Then, of course, it's, uh, it's an open platform. Everyone can access, all the actors can participate. And there's a number of open source tools that are available for developers and builders uh, to build uh, their own uh, dApps. We have also started to measure our own um, environmental performances, and I have to say that it's really a pleasure to see uh, those, those numbers here. Actually, VeChain is using 0.04% uh, of other comparable blockchain in terms of uh, CO2 emissions. So it, it, it's very low. I would say that it's one of the most, if not the most, uh, sustainable uh, blockchain platform uh, uh, in, in the world. Uh, also, um, uh, we have collected, uh, you know, the amount of CO2 tons uh, that in 2022 we have produced for running the airtime, let's say, blockchain platform, and it's equal to 4.4 uh, uh, tons. Of course, uh, we started recently to measure all these things, and the challenge for the future is to minimize this number and even to become a carbon neutral uh, company. So that's one thing on the uh, accessib accessibility and on the efficiency. But there's also a lot to be done on the governance side. Uh, our aim is to implement, uh, let's say, decentralized autonomous organization. We change should work uh, this way in the near future. Uh, in order to implement a DAO, again, there's, there's a lot of things to be done. Someone, you know, when you talk about DAO, say, well, but, you know, you just implement a voting system, that's it. It's not like that. It's much more complex. And there's a lot of uh, things to be done. Uh, but meanwhile, in, in, you know, waiting for implementing or to have the DAO, uh, say, up and running, there's already a number of things that we have to be. Uh, we need to be more transparent. Uh, we need to work on, on diversity, of course. We need to work on how the steering committee is working. Uh, so there's, there's a long list of things that you know, we are looking at at the moment. Uh, with the aim to, uh, uh, let's say, enable everyone who is, uh, let's say, acting on the blockchain platform to have a say. That's what VeChain would like to see in the near future. Uh, we would like to see um, whoever owns a node to take an active role, uh, to take decisions to, or to participate to take decisions. 
because that's, let's say, the spirit that belongs to this age, to be changed since uh, day one. So again, uh, this concept of having an active collaboration is something that we are not, uh, let's say, offering to uh, customers or whoever is using our technology, but it's something that we are going to implement ourselves uh, within the VeChain governance. Okay, so we are uh, approaching the end of this session. Uh, what is the, the roadmap? I'm scared to talk about the roadmap because every time I say something, I get tons of tweets in the upcoming days and weeks about uh, um, adherence to, to the roadmap. So this roadmap is general purpose roadmap. So no dates so far, no quantified goals. This is a learning for me <laughs> when presenting things to the community. So, what are going to do from now on? But first of all, we are already working. And, I mean, the biosphere concept is, is there and is going to be further uh, developed. Second step, we are already dealing with different players and stakeholders, not only enterprises. And we need to find, we desperately need to find champions, pioneers, okay? Because if we want to build minimum viable product for ecosystem, we need to find pioneers in terms of users and enterprises. It's not about only enterprises. And we are working hard to find this. And BCG will help us a lot on, on that. Uh, after that, we are going to build this put in operation the biosphere and co start connecting this ecosystem. But everything we are saying will not happen if we are not at the same time able to be evangelists and, let's say, educate people, users, starting from our own community, but not only, and trying to leverage all collective efforts and initiatives that different organizations across the world are undertaking in order to tackle the complex challenge of sustainability. In a few words, we have been condensing all this effort into a kind of aspiration statement, which I'm not going to uh, um, uh, read. It's, it's, it's very dense. It's the result of many weeks and months of work and could be summarized in a new payoff for VeChain, which is blockchain for our better world. I invite you to reflect on these words, but more than that, I invite you to read the white paper and come back to us with questions, ideas, opinions, suggestions, and contribution. Many thanks to everybody. Thank you.